honored to be here because I'm a fan of the people who make this show. They're not only talented storytellers, but they're kind humans. They care about what they're doing, why they're doing it, and who they're doing it for. They take the responsibility of telling the story seriously, and it's an honor to share the stage with them tonight. So, without further ado, let me welcome some of them to the stage. First of all, we have executive producer and showrunner, Emily Andres. <laughs> Next, we have Melanie Scrifano as <laughs> Glenn Milano. Next up, Pat Farrell as Nicole. We also have Chantal Riley as Kate. tonight, um, if you could share your reactions to the panel on social media using the hashtags Winona Earp and SDCC50, that would be great. So first of all, I wanted to give a special welcome to Greg. Yeah. One minute at a time. That's, um, that's good I love San Diego downtown. Oh, I have to. Like, as much as I like the water and the palm trees and stuff, San Diego downtown is awesome, especially when this convention's going on. Um, yeah. Yeah, a lot of really interesting people out there to talk to. I was just like, it's your first Comic Con, now talk first. <laughs> <laughs> So this is a great year for your first year because this is obviously a really special moment in Winona Earp fandom. And this is really the first chance you guys have had to you know, be in a room with this many Earpers since the announcement was made. Um, season four is back on schedule. Um, so I know you've talked about this a bit on social media and in the press, but can you all, you know, or if any of you want to talk about your reactions to first hearing that news and, and what it meant to you? It's even sweeter the second time around. <laughs> <laughs> um, we just would not be here without all you guys. It was just a once in a lifetime thing to see this fandom come together with so much positivity and creativity. And look, when you are a creative person, you hope against hope to make something that makes people feel like this and fight for it. Uh, and I can say there's so many incredible people involved with Wine on Earth, most of all this incredible cast, and they deserve all the love you have to give. Um, so thank you so much, everybody. It was just, uh, with you behind us, I, I honestly knew we couldn't fail, and we did not. Yay. <laughs> Um, so, we did get Greg this year, but there's a few Comic-Con regulars who weren't able to make it, and they were very upset about that, so we maybe have a message from them. that to 
Tim and Dom aren't here because the characters are in the Garden of Eden. No, the Garden is so musical. <laughs> So have you sequestered them off, Emily? And yeah, the they're like waiting. Say, we told them we'd be right back. Really? Bye. 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 <laughs> Just, here's a packet of crackers. We'll be right back. <laughs> coming to get you, you know. Natalie totally and my husband are on the case. But, uh, I know, that's just coincidence. Mm. But, uh, Interesting. suspense is our specialty, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> so, for Emily, I'm curious. Obviously, you started breaking the season at one point and then had to put that process on hold. Um, do you think you're... Is the story going to be the same as it would have been had you originally <laughs> told what you were going to tell? Um, I hope so. There's, I'm hoping that these guys are in it, for one thing. Um, <laughs> um, I've said this before, but you know, show running is really a 365 day a year job just because you're figuring out what the story is, you're producing the story, you're editing it, and then you're promoting it when it airs. So in a weird way, this... Um, breather was interesting because it really gave me a chance to remember what makes the show so special to people and what people love about it and just think about that. So I'm hoping to just make it the herbiest of all herb seasons that ever herbed. So, uh, <laughs> Melanie, Winona has a sword now. Yeah. Do you think that's an upgrade, a downgrade, or like a lateral movement? <laughs> Tell me about all the sword training you've been doing. I don't want to talk about it. No more swords. <laughs> I'm just so tired, scared. <laughs> like, I had to, okay, listen, 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 listen. <laughs> okay, I <laughs> forgot that I had a sword. <laughs> like, I legitimately, I was just like, oh, that's too bad about Waverly and dog and then like every so i just but then i forgot the rest of it um so i'm hoping that i can convince em that the sword is too violent um and i think it sounds perfect no and uh or can you just remember season one you were yep. like you can just be bad at having a gun at first and i was like Okay. You can be bad at having a sword. Okay, gracias. Okay. It's gonna be fine, guys. Relax. This is actually the season four writer's room right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Okay. There's the board. Yeah, totally go with it. Yeah. So, more seriously, Winona has lost arguably the two people she's closest with and who she depends on the most. Um, who do you see her leaning on without Doc and Waverly there? Well. <laughs> Where I was like, am I answering someone else's question? <laughs> it's been a while. Holy crud. Um, we can come back. No. <laughs> well, I think what's interesting is um, that good old Greg over there, um, or, you know, it's just the two of us. I think it'll be interesting to, um, to see how she maybe leans on him a bit. Or maybe he'll lean on her. <laughs> but maybe, you know, it's like we talked earlier about how Waverly is very much like uh, like the let's figure this out team. And it'll be interesting to see if Winona sort of, once she is has to be the one to do that, how she um, steps up to that. Maybe Nedley's good with a sword. <laughs> maybe Nedley what? <laughs> <laughs> I said maybe Nedley. Are you good with the sword? Oh, do I have to start work now? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mel. <laughs> so, Bo. Yes, ma'am. In the season three finale, we saw this mysterious name scrawled across the herb house, Valdez. And um, I know, you know, the show interprets things with their own spin from the comic books, but that's a character originated in the comic books. So could you talk a little bit about who that character is in the comic books and where they came from? Um, she's a character that I, I created a long time ago, but it was a special character, so I've always kept her in the drawer. And Winona Earth, the comic book, the TV show, seemed like the perfect place to pull that out. She's a possibly thousand-year-old princess warrior uh, from the Mayan era, and she's, she's been around for a long time. She's been with Black Badge since its creation. And in the comic book, um, in the comic book, she's pretty much, the best way I can think of to describe her is 
Xena warrior princess crossed with Spock from Star Trek. Very logical. Uh, very. Uh, she doesn't suffer fools. Let's put it that way, because your head could end up on the end of her war club. But uh, yeah, that's that's her thing. She's she's probably been at Black Badge and that sort of thing longer than anybody. Uh, but if if she ends up coming on the show. Uh, it's just the same with Winona and Bobo Del Rey when I created them 20 years ago. There's no hesitation. They hand it over to Emily, hand it over to the cast. She's proven already with Winona, with Bobo, any twist turns and stuff, she can do it. So, you know, this is good stuff. So great, Melanie already mentioned this, but when Winona returns to the town in the season three finale, Nedley seems to be the only other person who's there. Um, do you have any theories about why that might be? I know exactly what's gonna happen. Oh yeah? <laughs> I am gonna do ex exactly what Emily tells me. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, it, I mean, just personally, I find it really interesting that here's this guy who's been trying to retire. <laughs> uh, and and, and he, he didn't want to retire. Like, you go through that struggle and he finally convinces himself that everything is right now. It's perfect, and now I can retire. And then, and then this happens. Um, I can't wait to see what happens, to tell you the truth. Okay, Kat, imagine you're in charge of writing The Way Hot Wedding. No pressure, but what does it look like? This is you. This is so you. I said, imagine you're in charge of writing The Way Hot Wedding. What would that look like? Oh, okay, this is so you. I uh, got it. Well, I think we would definitely have a wedding on the homestead. Okay. In the springtime, some beautiful wildflowers all around, and very intimate, small, personal, with just our nearest and dearest. Winona would definitely fuck something up. <laughs> Please be aware that many members of your audience may be under 18 years old. Please be aware that Melanie's children are here and they have never heard no! of <laughs> She's so sweet and my god, and I don't know, maybe Kate will just turn her out a little bit. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> or frisque, you know. Kate's very spicy, you know. So hang around her long enough. We will turn her into a vampire too. Oh. Oh. You can't have all of my people. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. <laughs> So at the end of season three, the curse seems to be broken. 
Um, so Emily, I'm curious uh, why you, about the decision to wrap that like major part of the story up and why you yeah, thought it was time. Seems crazy. <laughs> it seems like something a tired, crazy person would do at the end of the season. No, um, I just think one of my favorite things about the show is that it's constantly throwing in challenges at everybody and like upending expectations. You know, I just think it was interesting that Paul Shar broke the curse, and the truth is, like, I feel like the curse has brought a lot of meaning to Winona, you know, in a horrible way. It's literally a curse, but also it's taught her what she's good at, and self-worth, and all that stuff. Um, I think there's still lots of challenges ahead. There's lots of different ways to be cursed. Period joke. <laughs> <laughs> she has a period for the rest of her life. <laughs> Pregnant. I love it. Okay. Okay. Amazing. So good. So good. Oh, I see where this is going. Go, go, go. Yeah. <laughs> Melanie, I'm curious who you think Winona is without the curse, if that changes her, not having that specific burden. I don't know. It's like that. sometimes you, it's like you define yourself by your problems, and it becomes. Thank you. I just thought of it. Really <laughs> um, I feel so smart right now. Um, <laughs> No, but you do. You define yourself by your curse, and 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 then it's like uh, you know, if I'm an addict to something. It's like okay, well now I got rid of that. What am I? And why do people? How do I? Oh, I have goosebumps. Like, I, how do I connect with people now? Because like, I've I've lost the thing that made people take care of me or care about me or ask me how I'm doing. And now if I don't have that, do they still care about me? I don't know. Like I think. And I'm so sorry. So, so fundamentally perfect. Um, she's very proud of me because I had a great breakfast answer to a question. Yeah, the whole She has been glowing ever since. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I think it'll be interesting, much like in season one, episode mm -hmm. eight, where where it was like, okay, I got rid of this the first seven. Oh yeah. You keep doing this to Winona. Yeah. Where it's like, fixed your problems. Now that's worse. I know. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, baby. Okay, yeah, which is why we should rewrite the history on the homestead. Oh. <laughs> no, something is, is there's a twist that's about to come. I can feel it. No, oh, I'm giving you my approval. So much. Okay, so we are going to take some fan questions. I'm going to ask one more question, but if you guys want to start lining up at the microphone, which I believe is over there, um, yeah, we're going to take those soon. So last season, we learned the detail about Nedley that he likes to watch Pretty Little Liars, which is one of my favorite <laughs> details. Um, it's okay, this isn't specifically for you. Right? You're actually off the hook because you, your character watches Pretty Little Liars. But I'm curious for the rest of you if you, what, what TV shows do your characters watch, do you think? Antique Rojo. 100%. All show, also National Geographic, anyway. <laughs> One day at a time. <laughs> uh, from our friend Gloria, the incredible showrunner, is here today. We love you so much. Right? Love you. Gloria, what a year for saving amazing shows. Yeah. Fan power, fan power, fan power, fan power, fan power. Um, Emily, so you spoke in an interview about how the fight for Winona campaign has inspired you to add themes of resistance and empowerment in season four. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk more about that? <laughs> if you've even progressed. Yeah, that path. it's <laughs> funny. I will, and like, obviously, not to get too political, I feel like there's um, a lot of people feeling like they're part of our resistance right now. Um, yeah, and I think that's very indicative of what our show stands for. Um, so ironically, I feel like we were already going down that route about there were going to be things to resist and things to fight back against and knowing who's on your team and deciding what's uh, worth it. But uh, I don't know. I just want a poster for season four with all your beautiful faces that just says fight. Sci-fi. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are going to start taking fan questions. So. You're up. Hi, Stacy from San Diego. Hi, excellent jacket. <laughs> such a great show, uh, such great acting, and such great writing. One of my favorite things about the show is these fantastic one-liners <laughs> that y'all come up with, particularly Melanie. 
I know in my household we were um, doing the guac excuse me all the time. <laughs> but anyway, for Melanie, any particular lines or one one liners or anything that really stood out your favorite? Literally the hardest, worst question you could have asked me. <laughs> She's good. But you're wearing a leather jacket, so I'll let it slide. <laughs> Um, I always go back to the, the good old standby, uh, I don't blow jobs without a please first, but, um, <laughs> classic, yeah, um, but the, um, the, uh, that's right, Jeremy said vagina. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Hi there, my name is Toby. I am a huge fan of the show. Hey, Toby. Hi. Um, I love all of the characters that you guys play, and you all have like a lot of really defining cool characteristics. So what would your characters choose to be their vigilante or superhero name based off of those characteristics? Oh. Okay, well, that's not <laughs> I need like a week to answer that. Yeah. Seven seconds. Nicole, Great. the rustic warrior princess. <laughs> Kate, the vampire queen. <laughs> she got brave. Randy, the dandy. <laughs> That's a very old word, but. Um, Wynonna, motherfucking sloth with a machine gun. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, thanks for being kind to me yesterday at the signing. I was so... Thanks for being kind to us. Yeah. <laughs> um, my question, I guess, is for Kat and Emily. Maybe Melanie. I'm sorry, Melanie. Um, what would you guys think, and it, maybe if it happened, with Waverly had angel wings. Oh, yeah. I think that would be Could it happen? freaking amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I think Thera would like that and share photos of it and make memes of it. Um, I know someone who really wants angel wings and her name rhymes with Mamani Mokos Chokwe. What would Nicole think? Yeah, like, would she? Would it figure you out? Fall or? over okay. from the ethereal beauty. I don't know if we can handle Waverly being any more beautiful. <laughs> more attractive. She's a little angel, like you said. What's that? She's a little angel, like you said in the uh, Christmas yeah. session. So that's right. Yeah, I just think I think anything. I think Waverly. Nicole just feathers are kinky. Melanie's <laughs> <laughs> gonna make it, you know, on brand. <laughs> I'm gonna stay on brand with. Beautiful ethereal angel. Oh, there's a okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, good question. How do you think Winona would be different if her child was united with her? And will it Ooh. ever happen? Ooh. Soft spot. Hard hands. Yeah. Oh. Nice. Yeah, good question. I got deep real quick. <laughs> Thanks. Great question. Oh god. Do you okay. think that the lack of curse will affect how she feels about Alice? <gasps> what an excellent question. <laughs> I just think Okay, and also like if it was between go oh, oh okay. So if it was between going to save ooh. Okay. I'm just what I'm just saying. Oh, I'm, going there. I'm just saying the whole guy is weak. That's drama. That's good drama. It's yeah. good television. So he's trying. He's like, let's get television. Try it. Just do it. Okay. <laughs> Maybe we'll see. Maybe we'll see. Oh god, that was a good question. <laughs> by Megan Follow. Incredible. Um, 
Well, she went off looking for her love, who was Julian, and it's a bit of a surprise <laughs> waiting for her at home. <laughs> I feel like some things happen. I know she's got some explaining to do. Feathers are kink. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, would, I, would, I would love to bring Mama Earth back, but as usual, I'm sure she would show up when least expected and maybe not the best time, but we'll see. She's okay. not very good at finding Julian, is she? No, she's not great. <laughs> not great. Yeah. Wow, well, look at this costume. Hi, Hi. Hi. my name is Mel. Um, and I have to be the person that says that I really love everything you do with the show. It's amazing. Um, and Melanie, as a person, I really love you. <laughs> oh, my kids are here. Good choice. My question <laughs> is... <laughs> So, Melanie, what was your favorite Winona moment? Like, your moment to play her, what was your favorite? <laughs> oh. <laughs> that IDW and Sci-Fi and 724 and Emily were such champions of putting their money where their mouth is and saying we're a feminist show, we're gonna write this in. Thank um, you for staying with us. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, and then to the fans for not being like, ew, ew, she's pregnant, change the channel, you know? But, like, it just restored my faith in, in this business and in, in the people who watch and, and in my ability to have um, the most amazing family and be able to do what I do. Do I know if she does? Uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Has she will... her cheerleader? 
will show you show with something. I'm sorry, I was talking over you. Can you repeat that last part? Will she be in the show with some special ability? How? Yeah, we gotta find her though. She's like in my garden playing guitar. With my guitar. <laughs> um, possibly, uh, possibly. Do you worry about making her like too powerful? I mean, I don't know. Sure. <laughs> yes, sometimes I do. Sometimes I do, but uh, but maybe not. That would be cool. No, I, I do. That's a good point. I think so much of what defines Winona and Waverly is that in some ways they each have what the other one wants. I think that Waverly really always wanted to be the herb heir and be kind of the chosen one. And I think deep down, despite everything, Winona would give it all to be loved and belong. So I think those themes have to stay the same. Until they don't. <laughs> Does anyone else okay, have more questions? questions? Nobody get up in line yet. Wait, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can go, you can go, go, go. There's so much power. <laughs> uh, hi, so hi. if you had to switch characters with anyone else, who would you be? Switch characters. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> They what all love their characters. I know, I know that's, that's my true that's answer. It's like, true. I'm sort of playing the one I want to play. Right. But um, <laughs> I've always, like, when I heard about Kate, I was like, oh, that's that would be such a challenge because you have to play, like, the idea of playing someone who's been alive for that long and has that much depth to them, but then is also, like, like this saucy, like, current, like, you're current, but you have to have this, like, Ancient quality to you, I think is so cool. I would probably as long as I don't look ancient. No. <laughs> Keep it fresh. No, no, you keep it fresh. I love all the villains. I love like any villain. I would love to play Mercedes or Bobo. I, I just think there's something so interesting about playing villains because there's so much there. And villains don't think that they're villains. Uh, I think there's a lot of a lot of stuff you can unpack as an actor with those characters. Do any of you want to be comic book creator Bo? <laughs> I had my 17 seconds of fame in, Woo! what was it, season two, episode eight. So I would like to see him become a recurring character. Yes, yes. I got plans. Yeah, him and Tim have the showdown. Yeah, that they I like that. I would like yeah, that. that. I can make that happen. I think that should happen. I think that's a good idea. How's, are you good with a sword? Is anyone good with a sword? <laughs> Because in the comic books, I can kill any of them. It's true. <laughs> I'd like to play anyone possessed. You know, like like two personalities, where you have Edley, and then the minute someone's back is turned, you see the other guy. Um, I'd like to do that. Opposites are always really challenging. Just touch the good. Deep. Edley, and then Calamity Jane. <laughs> <laughs> San Diego, Hi. and I was wondering if there's any chance she'll have Nicole's parents' backstory oh. in. I think it'd be really interesting just because of the trauma that she's been through. Yes. Yeah, right. right. Gosh, I would love. I would love to see what they're like. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're very nice people. <laughs> no. no. I would, I mean, anything. I, that's what I loved about this last season. I felt like I learned so much more about Nicole. We all did, and. Gosh, I, was, I know that there's some a lot of baggage there. Yeah. I think very interesting to see what those people are like. Yes. Maybe they'll be redeemed. You think so? Like, um, like a Dick, you know, family, and they come back and they reunite. No. No. You're like, you're like, my, you're like my little son. He's like, do they turn nice at the end? He always wants to know they turn nice, but. I love See? your optimism. 
Yes, me too. Doesn't make for great television. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a fun cast. That'd be fun casting. Hi, my name's Britt. Hi. My question is, if your if your character was to get a tattoo, what would it be? Ride faster. <laughs> <laughs> Doc's hat. Oh. Doc's heart. Oh. Doc. Yeah. You know, like if they give you a piece of wardrobe, actors are so thirsty, they'll, they'll just go, oh, look at the wardrobe. Like, oh, I must, my character must be a bull rider because the, his belt buckle is a championship uh, bull riding buckle. Um, so I just went with that. Um, okay. And they're tough motherfuckers. <laughs> There, we just finished the stampede, the Calgary stampede, and they're all they're all short, stocky guys that have had every single bone in their body broken. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a tough, tough sport. So it would be. I'm not going to say a bull on his ass or something, but um, <laughs> but something commemorative, I think. Right here. Mm. Yeah. Or, or. Oh. <laughs> that she thought was really lovely, like angel wings with a flame inside, and then White Nut would make fun of her for yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And it would be like, it actually looked like something totally perverse, and I'd be like, do you know that looks <laughs> like a bird pooping, uh, pooping fire, pooping dog does, and you're like, oh. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Brett. Tacos? I don't know. <laughs> Um, hi everyone, I'm Jermaine from the Philippines. Hi. So, uh, hi. Yeah, uh, you have herbers around the world. <laughs> okay, uh, the question is, uh, there are many personalities and creatures uh, that, in the show, so uh, which was your personal favorite and what? Like of actual, like actual supernatural creatures or just characters? Um, whichever you consider as a villain. Oh, a villain. Oh, wow. Oh, I loved the Jack of Knives. Mm. Yeah, I love that character. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's hard to top Bobo Del Rey. Yeah. yeah. From Bo. I mean, just such a classic character, so much room to play. And Michael Eklund does such an incredible job with him. I always know. thought Champ was a good villain. I love Champ. Oh, yeah. It's wonderful. He was really funny. Yeah, I like some of the human villains, like Champ and Tucker and people like that. Oh. And, yeah. I like hated Tucker, <laughs> but maybe does that mean I love him? Right. Like it, well, he did a good job, I guess. Yeah. 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 But I love Bobo. I second that. Like a Bobo is like. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like the scariest villains are the ones that feel the most human. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. Hey everybody! Hey. Um, so since it's Greg's first comic, <laughs> um, just to shine a spotlight on him for a second, if you could um, choose one scene that was your favorite to film with him, and if you didn't film with him, uh, what a dream what scene would be. Sorry. Uh, well, the scene with Cat, but she did all the work. You know, uh, like no. the 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 father-daughter scene, um, but you know, secretly, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an eight-year-old, and um, uh, I always wanted to be an action, action hero. I just liked walking down the hallway loading the shotgun. Uh, that, 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 that to me was like, uh, 
was like the rare opportunities I get to do a Western and you're walking through set and towards your horse with your cowboy hat on and your guns and you go, look at me. <laughs> I'm a cowboy. <laughs> time for one last question. But before we take it, um, we're going to do a Winona cosplay group photo outside of the ballroom after this event. So for those who want to be part of that, if you can exit through the side doors, the photo will be taken in room 202A, right across the hall from the exit and next to the bag check area. So if you guys want to start making your way over there, if you're a Winona cosplayer, it might be easier now than in a few minutes. <laughs> Okay, so the last question. Hi, I'm Karen. Hi. Um, I was just wondering, so Chantel, you came in already established, I mean like the cast was already established, mm -hmm. how did you come into that, like with it already, the cast already together? Um, I was very nervous. It's always scary to come into a new, a new show, especially one that's <laughs> very successful. Um, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm close friends with Shamir, um, who I'm sure we all love. And, uh, and so, you know, he did give me some good prep ahead of the show and just told me how lovely everyone was and how warm they were. And as soon as I stepped on set, that's exactly what I felt. I felt the love. I felt very welcomed. And um, uh, yeah, I'm so happy to be with you guys. Yeah, it was really nice coming on here. It wasn't hard. It was no drama, no diva this. Thank God. Um, but yeah, it was amazing to be to be welcomed to the family. Thank you. Thank you. So I want everyone to I want to remind everyone that the magicians panel is next. Uh, so you should stick around for that. I'm going to. But I also just wanted to thank all the panelists for being here and all of you for being here. Um, and making this event so special. I hope you have a good rest of your con. Thank you, Katie, for moderating. Thank you.